All the non-stop joy, mirth, mandatory parties, carols, cards, tinsel and holly can make the holidays unbearably irritating. So if you're in the mood for a little menace this yuletide, put away your copy of The Night Before Christmas and join us for some nightmares before Christmas, and we don't mean the Tim Burton stop-motion musical, a list of 10 Christmas monsters. Between cannibalistic witches, goat demons, and ritualistic child murderers, you're sure to get a fright from them. Most of them come from old European myths and fairy tales that predate the Christian holiday, but some appear in more modern Christmas stories from pop culture. A fair warning for the faint of heart, these tales and images might scare the hell out of you, so if you're sensitive to violence or squeamish at all, you might want to stick to some or other. Grilla All the Yule Lads answer to Grilla, their mother. She predates the Yule Lads in Icelandic legend as the ogress who kidnaps, cooks, and eats children who don't obey their parents. She only became associated with Christmas in the 17th century, when she was assigned to be the mother of the Yule Lads. According to the legend, Grilla had three different husbands and 72 children, all of whom caused trouble, ranging from harmless mischief to murder. As if the household wasn't crowded enough, the Yule Cat also lives with Grilla. This ogress is so much of a troublemaker that the Onion blamed her for the 2010 eruption of the Eyjafjallajökull volcano. This thrice-married Icelandic giantess lives in a mountain cave near the Dimmiborgir lava fields with her third husband and has extrasensory powers that allow her to detect misbehaving children in nearby towns. She kidnaps the brats and then cooks them into a delicious stew. It's her favorite food, always in high supply. She's also the owner of Jolakota Rin, the hellacious yule cat, and mother of the mischievous yule lads, Jolakota Rin. Jolakota Rin is the Icelandic yule cat or Christmas cat. He is not a nice cat, in fact, he might eat you. This character is tied to an Icelandic tradition in which those who finished all their work on time received new clothes for Christmas, while those who were lazy did not, although this was mainly a threat. To encourage children to work hard, parents told the tale of the Yule Cat, saying that Jolakota Rin could tell who the lazy children were because they did not have at least one new item of clothing for Christmas, and these children would be sacrificed to the Yule Cat. This reminder tends to spur children into doing their chores. A poem written about the cat ends with a suggestion that children help out the needy, so they, too, can have the protection of new clothing. It's no wonder that Icelanders put in more overtime at work than most Europeans, the Yule Lads. You can think of the 13 Yule Lads as Santa's little helpers back before Santa was a thing. Each Yule Lad had a nickname related to his particular brand of mischievousness Stubby, the short one, steals pans to eat the fried bits stuck to them, sausage swiper hides in the rafters and steals meat when no one's looking, sheep cook clod plays in ravines and harasses sheep. When not stealing food or bothering livestock, the Yule Lads leave gifts or rotten potatoes in children's shoes, depending on how good the kids have been. In other versions, they just kill the kids. Charming Perchta. In the film Krampus, Perchta is a demented angel doll, but her origins go way back to Germanic roots in the early Middle Ages, roughly 500 to 900 A. B. She has several names throughout Europe, like Labafana and Babushka, and her reputation ranges from sweet to sadistic, but she's always described as a domestic goddess, either a beautiful one with snow white skin or a wrinkled hag with a hooked nose and raggedy clothes. She also always has a giant foot that either comes from her endless days working the foot pedals of spinning wheels or from her ability to shapeshift into a goose. In fact, she's actually the legendary inspiration behind Mother Goose, though she's not all lullabies and fairy tales. She's apparently obsessed with cleanliness and good manners, so obsessed that she leaves obedient children and young servants silver coins in their pails. Bad kids, however, get disemboweled, have their innards replaced with garbage, straw and pebbles, and get sewn up to suffer alone in ungodly pain afterwards. Because she loves tidiness, she often carries a broom with her and can also fly. She's basically a witch, and can be seen at various Christmas celebrations around Europe sharing candies or planning her next ritualistic torture. She also employs horned demons to help her punish bad kids, these creatures are known as Straggle, Hans Trap. Hanstrap is basically an ultra-scary version of Varda Pete and Pierre Fautard from Alsace, France. He started off as a vain, cruel and thoroughly debauched rich man who practiced black magic and worshipped Satan just to increase his wealth and power. When the Catholic Church got wind of him, they brought him before the Pope and excommunicated him. Local townspeople hated and feared him so much that they seized all his money and lands while he was away and then banished him into the forest. A bad move. They'd soon realize. In a shack made of sticks, he grew demented, became obsessed with cannibalism, stuffed his clothes with straw to appear like a scarecrow and then eventually stalked and stabbed a 10-year-old boy with a pointy stick. 
He carried the boy's body back to his shack for some good eaten, but the good lord struck trap dead with a lightning bolt before a single morsel touched his lips. Despite his death, the parents in northeastern France still use the child murderer's name to get kids to finish their Brussels sprouts, Marie Lewitt, also known as the Christmas zombie horse, or more plainly, the gray horse. Welsh revelers dress up as this creepy-ass pantomime by hoisting a horse skull upon a stick and covering its bearers with a white sheet. The wraith-like equine walks the dark streets with a costumed owner to bother neighbors for free grub and hooch. Traditionally the horse knocks on a door and sings a song requesting entry, the homeowner's refuse with a counter song and they go back and forth until the homeowners eventually relent, though it's not entirely clear why, perhaps it's just to end the creepiness and public embarrassment of being panhandled by a dead, singing horse. While softcore types will use a paper horse head instead of an actual skull, others adorn their horse heads with ribbons, glass eyes and mouths that open and close, all the better for scaring children and adults as the wassail insider flow, connect Ruprecht. Sometimes he's depicted as looking like Krampus, while other times, he's closer to the man behind the winkies in Mulholland. Dr. Connect Rupert is St. Nick's most familiar attendant in German myth. Depending on the story you've heard, he either was originally a farmhand or, and this is our favorite, a feral child Santa discovered and raised from childhood. He's a real stickler for prayer. According to legend, he asks if children can pray if they can, they get apples, nuts and gingerbread. But if they can't, they get a walk with his sack of ashes. But if you're truly bad, look out. In the Austrian version of the myth, the worst children are beaten with birch branches, then stuffed in a sack and thrown into an icy river. Fun fact, in the German version of The Simpsons, their pet greyhound Santa's little helper is named after Connect Rupert, the Tomton. Don't let looks deceive you. He might look like a cute little gnome, but you will not want to mess with him. Not only does he possess immense strength, but he does not fuck around. He's easily offended, and if you cross him, if you're lucky you'll get a hard strike to the ear. Otherwise he might kill your livestock, beat you half to death, drive you insane or kill you with his poisonous bite. But if you treat him well, he'll protect your household. This is one guy you want on your side, La Bafana, Babushka if your Russian La Bafana gets around. She comes from Italy, Russia, and Eastern Europe. In Russia they call her Babushka, but her mo is the same no matter what she's called. She's also known as the Christmas Witch, and like Belsnickel and Connect Rupert, she'll give both punishments and prizes. If you're good, you'll get cookies and gifts, but if you're bad you'll get coal. And if you stay up and catch a glimpse of her, she'll whack you with her broom. Krampus. Everyone's favorite half-goat, half-demon, with shaggy fur, phallic horns, a long curved tongue, and fangs hails from a pre-Christian pagan past. Some scholars think he might even be an incarnation of the devil or at least the horned god of the witches. Either way, he's a lot like Pierre Fortar in that he's Santa's evil sidekick, he wears chains, leaves coal as gifts and whips unruly children with birch reeds, carrying off the really bad ones in his wicker basket so he can drown, eat them or literally send them to hell. If you're looking to get on Krampus' good side, rumor has it he likes big-breasted women and schnapps. He's also become very popular, as many international cities now hold Krampus parades or parties near Krampusnacht. He also has his own 2015 Christmas horror comedy named after him, in which he punishes families who have lost their Christmas spirit. As a tool to encourage good behavior in children, Santa serves as the carrot, and Krampus is the stick. Krampus is the evil demon anti-Santa, or maybe his evil twin. Krampus may look like a devil, or like a wild alpine beast, depending on the region and what materials are available to make a Krampus costume. In Austria and other parts of Europe, Krampus night is celebrated on December 5th, the eve of Street Nicholas Day. Public celebrations that night had many Krampuses walking the streets, looking for people to beat. In recent years the tradition has spread beyond Europe, and many cities in America now have their own Krampus nights.